But let us check in with two of our NBC News pollster, Bill McIntyre, Jeff Forward. Bill, as I look at this terrain, I am thinking of those remarks you gave to all of us here at NBC News on a conference call the other day. You said, of course, we pollsters have humility. How <laughs> could we not? You have 100 million early votes. You have laws about voting that have changed in nearly every single state. You have a pandemic. Well, this has been humbling for pollsters, and a lot of folks are waking up and saying, why were these seeming to be so off? Well, I can understand people's frustration. Let me try to explain it. You read national polls, and it says Biden's ahead by seven, eight, nine points. And by the way, he's going to win this national election comfortably. He's going to win it by more than Hillary Clinton did. But <clears throat> we've got California, Oregon, Washington, New York. We have 30 percent of our country who are these kind of absolutely core blue states, and Donald Trump's going to lose those states by an average of 25 points. That's not how our country operates. We operate by an electoral college, and as I'm saying today, hey, don't blame the pollsters. Blame our founding fathers. They didn't want the elections decided by Virginia. They wanted to. But Bill, the you're here. <laughs> Thomas Jefferson is not. <laughs> You know, it's funny, you know, Savannah, you made, a, you made a point uh, just a while ago, and Jeff, I'll ask you about this. Is Donald Trump kind of the X factor? Is he the reason that people have difficulty polling? No, look, I think what, I think what Bill says, saying is exactly right. This is a, 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 a you know, 2020 is 2020. It's a unique year, um, and we are seeing, uh, you know, People voting in different ways and, and counting in, in different ways, and so I think we do need to be patient uh, when the voters actually vote and cast, say what they want to say. It's a humbling experience for all of us. And the key right now is there's going to be a lot of time to look at the polls and see what went right and what didn't. But the fact remains that uh, you know Joe Biden is, is ahead nationally by 2.6 million votes. That has increased as Bill uh, has predicted. And, um, you know, I think right now we're ready to focus on making sure we're listening to the voters as we did last night and will continue. And look, in 2018, we saw this happen before where there were candidates who were winning on Election Day. And as the votes came in, as they were counted, uh, there was a different result. And I think, uh, you know, as unsatisfying as that is, we need to be patient and really listen to what, what the voters are telling us. Well, it's interesting because, uh, Bill and Jeff, I know that pollsters made a lot of changes mm -hmm. after 2016. And one thing that Chuck had mentioned to us a couple of times is a lesson learned in 2016 is you don't stop polling the Saturday mm -hmm. before Election Day. You keep at it because there are late deciders. What I mean, I, this is just the back of the envelope on a Wednesday morning, but what are some things that you feel like might be learned in this scenario? Well, again, one of the things we talked about is on our Sunday poll, Trump had closed another point. His job approval is up to 47. Um, and the other thing to remember is the we are we now know that we have the highest percentage of eligible voters voting since uh, since 1900. We've kind of shattered that record from 1960 Amazing. from County Nixon. And what the Trump people did really well is they said, you know, what we're going to do we're going to spend a year and we're going to find non-college white voters in core states, and we're going to pick up a little Latino vote, very small African American vote. But part of what happened last night, and this is your rebuke to the Democratic Party, is that non-college white voting men were in these states voting for uh, the president by 30, 40 point margins. And in our polling, we were getting high numbers like 25 or 30, but not that high. And so those margins by the number of people who came out, this record, unbelievable turnout, and those margins uh, tipped the scale in a way that's, I think, hard to see in a poll. But I, I do think this is what we outlined as a very realistic possibility, including on Sunday, Meet the Press, when we talked about the exact three states. Because we said you got to look at states where high non college white and large election day turnout yet to come. And that's what happened yesterday. Do you guys have any insight on Pennsylvania? What's going to happen? <laughs> uh, See, Hoda still trusts the pollsters. Yeah. I trust. <laughs> yeah. Look, um, I, I think it's what I think is, 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 Sorry, Jeff. So in particular, is a, is a place we're just going to have to to wait and and be patient. And I know the waiting is is a is a it's very hard to do right now. But because each county is kind of doing things their own way and and how they always do things, uh, we need to sit back and, and and let the votes be counted. I will add what to what Bill was saying is that also uh, the number of first time voters uh, we should be paying attention to because nationally, first time voters went to went to um, Biden by almost 40 points. 
But in a number of these battleground states, as Bill alluded to, uh, the Trump campaign really did do a job. It's evident here the margins are much closer with first-time voters who are, are also more difficult to get in, 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 into uh, survey samples at, at times. So uh, it's, that's important to look at as well. Well, Bill and Jeff, we mm -hmm. appreciate the work you do and appreciate you coming on and answering questions that a lot of folks have. Bill McIntyre, Jeff Horwitt, our Thanks. pollsters for NBC News, The Wall Street Journal poll. Thank you. Thanks, guys.